Hello. Time to do a uh, another physics slash po problem. Um, it's actually my birthday today, so yay! Yeah, I'm still doing videos, but that's just how much I care about you guys. Okay, so what problem are we gonna do? We're gonna do that stupid po sine problem. That uh, if you look at the answer in the in the um, uh, the on the BBS in that PowerPoint, not only is it confusing, but it's wrong. Which is uh, generally not great to be uh, studying off of. Um, it, it is wrong. Uh, I'm 100% positive. I even uh, ended up confirming that with um, Dr. Christo that it was incorrect because they made a uh, they made an error in calculating the torque, which uh, we'll see where that comes up in a second. So, um, oops, let me complete that line. Okay, so the problem proposed is this right here. Um, they say that uh, Poe Industries has created this sign, and it weighs 300 pounds. Actually, crap, i got to take out all that. But uh, it's this sign, and it weighs 300 pounds, and they say that um, the sign is 2 feet high, Oops, let me make this smaller. The sign is 2 feet high. It's 12 feet long. This rod is 12 feet long. And the height of this uh, right here is 5 feet. I'm sorry, this was not 2 feet. I lied to you there. This was, uh, this was 4. Go away. Erase, erase. Okay. This was 4. So it was a 4 foot tall um, sign. And uh, what they say is that the center of mass of this object is right here, right here, and that weighs 300 pounds. So where's my tool? 300 pounds. By the way, I think I've gotten pretty good at writing with a mouse. Some of you have watched all my videos. You'll notice my handwriting has gotten better. So that's one plus to all this, um, besides the fact that people are hopefully hel uh, being helped by my... Uh, videos. My handwriting is on computers is also getting better. But um, So what do we do in this situation? How do we uh, begin to approach this? Well, the first thing we need to do is, first let's figure out um, what this side is. Well, that's just a Pythagorean theorem. 25, 5 squared is 25, 12 squared is 144, so when you add them together you get 169, and the square root of that turns out to be 13, because Dr. Christo loves those, uh, those special triangles that are easy to do the, um, like the angles and stuff for. So, or rather easy to take the, uh, the trig functions of. So, if this is the angle, if this is an angle T, uh, then sine of T, sine of T is equal to what? Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, that's 5 over 13. And that's equal to what? 5 over 13 equals. You get 0 0.38. Uh, 0 0.384. 0 0.38. Ah, let's just make it 0 0.38. Uh, and then cosine of t. Cosine of t is equal to 12 over 13, right? Adjacent over hypotenuse. That's 12 over 13. And that's equal to uh, 12 over 13. That's equal to 0.923. So 0 0.92. 0 0.92, I'm going to say. And uh, now, I don't even know which of these trig functions I'm going to use. But I do know that it's really useful right from the very beginning to just define these and put them up in the corner because that way when it co when you come to having to calculate it all later, it's just less that you have to manually type into your calculator. Um, so how do we approach the rest of this problem? Well, let's actually turn this into a bit of a simpler um, diagram. Um, let's look at it like this. We can actually pretend that this whole piece here this whole sign, other than this one connecting beam, does not exist. And what we know is that the center of mass is right here. Right? 
because when they say center of mass, that means we're treating it as like a single point that has that mass. So we can say that if the entire sign is being suspended by these two rods right here, it's being suspended by these two rods, and the weight is right in the middle, well, this is the mass, or the, uh, not the mass, or the weight, and it's pulling downwards with a force of 300 pounds. I'm using a big blocky font because it's big. No, actually I'm using it because I'm too lazy to switch. There. Okay, so that's 300 pounds down that way. This is actually a, a much trickier problem than, than it initially appears. Um, you see, what's going on is that what if we treat this as like an axle or like a hinge? Let's say this is a hinge. Hinge. Hypothetically, it's kind of a hinge, kind of not. Uh, but if this were a hinge, what would be happening if this was pulling down with 300 um, pounds of force? Well, that means that if this were a hinge, this, maybe it's a, a, a minute hand, is going to start turning clockwise, right? Because this is pulling downwards. It's, it's trying, to turn it counter, or trying to turn it clockwise. But since it's not spinning, that means that this other support rod has to be pulling it back um, with that same amount of turniness. <laughs> Great words there. Same amount of turniness, so that way it doesn't... Um, start spinning. So how much torque is it going, how much energy is there, um, how much work is being done clockwise, right, because work is, because um, that's what torque is, torque is uh, rotational work. Um, so torque and work are, are the same thing, and that's why uh, torque is the same as work, uh, which is the force applied times the distance away from the hinge. So we've got 300, and since they said that uh, it was in the middle, we know that this is 6 feet right here, right? So that's 6. This is this length is 6, so 300 times 6, we get 1800. So that's 1800 joules of force, uh, not joules, joules, I mean not force, joules of uh, energy uh, clockwise, and this has to be going uh, counterclockwise with the same amount. Um, so what distance is this away? Well, uh, remember we said that torque is equal to the force times the distance. Torque equals force, oh sorry, capital F, force times distance. And now we know how much energy there is in torque, right? We know this T, that's what we just solved for. Um, did I just write, that's a D, that is a D, sorry, handwriting's bad again. So we know that the torque is 1800, and that's equal to whatever the force is at this um, block right there, whatever you want to call it, at that um, support, that force times the distance, which uh, the length of this is 12, so that's times 12. So if you divide both sides by 12, 12, these cancel out, and uh, you get that the f uh, this yield, that's just a yield sign, that you get that the force equals, well, what's 1800 over 12? 1800 over 12, and that's 150. So, 150 pounds. And this is probably what you would have expected, since this was in the middle, right? If it's in the middle, it's going to be distributed evenly between these two. So this is just a nice confirmation that half of the weight's on this one and half of it's on this one. But uh, the reason I did that in so much detail is because if it was right here, say, eight feet away, it would not be that even split. And it would not even be uh, a direct ratio, I don't think. So um, I think it's useful for you to see this done. But... Um, or in this case, since it was in the middle, you could just say, okay, even split on both ends. Either way. Um, oh, by the way, this is going to... Uh, yeah, whatever. Uh, they're both grounded. They're both locked into the wall, whatever. Um, so now what's going on here? That means that uh, we've got 150 pounds here. That's 150. And over here we've got 150, right? That's how we just figured out that... Uh, on this on this one it's pulling downwards with 150 that means that the this is now this is just a pretty simple chess again because now we've got this y piece right here 
is equal to what? We know that that 150, the y, is equal to, let's make this a, b, and c. So then the y piece is equal to a, c, times the sine of t, right? Right, because if we were trying to find this height, oops, sorry, that's 150, uh, then we would multiply the hypotenuse times the sine of this angle to get the height, and these two angles are the same, right? Because it, it's just like, I mean, that's just some triangle properties. So we get that AC equals 150 over sine of T. And we know that sine of T is equal to that 0.38, that was what we figured out before. So we can say 150 divided by 0.3, whoops, where did my calculator go? One fifth. Oops. Clear. One fifty divided by point three eight equals. We get three hundred ninety four. So three hundred and ninety four. Uh, that actually, if if you used a um, one thing to notice is that if you had used the fraction, if you use the fractional number then the answer that you get would just be 390. If you use the decimal, you get 394. So errors do actually come up whether you use a fraction versus a decimal form. I'm using the fraction, so it's not strictly correct. I mean, I'm using the, uh, the decimal, so it's not strictly correct. Um, but it's a preference thing. He's not going to take off for it. Um, so that's the force along here, right? And that's going to be 3... And four. Yes, I am dyslexic. Um, so that's 394 pounds of force. That means that this rod has to be strong enough to hold 300 pounds of force. And is it under compressive stress or tensive stress? By now you should be kind of used to looking at it and saying, okay, if this is pulling down, well then it's pulling down along this. So this has to be pulling back up. This is a tensive force, tension. And if this is pulling up, well then this rod has to be pushing away. And now this is just a, another uh, a simple triangle truss. I'm not going to go through the details of solving this part because this is no more complicated than any other truss that uh, any other triangle or truss that you would do. I mean, you, you should know how to solve this part, and if not, review some of my other videos. And if those still don't make sense, let me know, and I'll. Uh, I'm not circling this for any particular reason. I just like circling things. But uh, if uh, if you don't know how to solve this, let me know, and I'll make more videos on it because um, it's important to be able to solve the trusses. But this was just uh, a bit of a tricky problem, kind of, kind of not. Uh, or at least it was tricky if you based your work off of what it said in the slideshow, because it was wrong. <laughs> but, um, yeah, like uh, I think what the, the slideshow um, told you that in order to support it, this rod would have to be able to hold something like 1,800 pounds of strength. I mean, it's ridiculous. So it's, it's not even reasonable. Um, but hopefully that helped. Um, yeah, I'm going to go uh, celebrate my birthday. So uh, I'll see you later.